Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Photoshop to create a birch forest scene similar to this one. You'll be using this scene in a future project. One of the interesting things about this project is all of the textures. You'll be creating that effect using some vintage paper. So if you look in Google Classroom, here is a post called textured paper and there are uh, about 10 options for you to choose from. Let's get started. First go to File, New, click on the Film and Video and choose the second option 1280 by 720. Title the project something like Birch Forest and then click the Create button. You'll notice that there are some blue guidelines on here. To hide those, go to View, Show, Guides, and that will turn them off. I'm going to push Control or Command-0 to make that fit the screen. Next, I'm going to choose the paper for my background. I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded, and scroll through here. I chose the paper called Worn but you can choose any paper that you want. So I clicked place and now I'm going to drag this and I'm going to hold down shift so that I can get it just the right size that I want it to be to fill the space. So continuing to hold down shift on the keyboard and now I'm going to click the check mark. You'll notice over here in the Layers panel that this has a Smart Object icon down here in the corner. I'm going to take that, uh, remove that by right-clicking and going to Rasterize. As a Smart Object, we won't be able to do all of the things that we want to with it, so I converted that. The next thing I notice is that this has kind of a yellowish tint to it, which I don't think will look good for my sky. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom of the Layers panel and click on the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer button and choose Black and White. So that takes that tint away from it. Next thing that I'm going to do is click the little plus sign down here to get a new layer. And now I'm going to choose a color. So here is my Swatches panel. and I, you can see all the previous colors I've used up here. So I'm going to use maybe this color right here. And I'm going to get the paint bucket. Now the paint bucket is sometimes grouped with the gradient tool. So if you see this symbol, just click and hold on it and switch it to the paint bucket. Now on my blank layer, I'll just click that. And I'm going to go to my blend modes in my layers panel. So right here where it says normal, I'm going to open this up and scroll through these one at a time until I find one that I like. And I think, I think I like soft light, but I think that my color needs to be darker. So I'm going to double click my blue over here. I'm going to choose, um, something like this, then click OK, and that's better. I might adjust it a little bit more later. The next thing that I'm going to do is add the grass and shrub area down here at the bottom. So again, I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded, and for my second, for this part, I chose the paper called splotchy, splotchy paper, but you can choose whatever you want. So I'm going to click place and again, holding down shift, I'm going to drag, oops, drag this to fit. So holding down shift and then check mark. Then over here, I'm going to right click on the smart object and go to rasterize. Now I'm simply going to get the um, selection tool and drag this down into the approximate area where I think maybe two-thirds of the way down, something kind of like that. Now to give this kind of a, a rough edge at the top, I'm going to use um, the paintbrush 
and I'm going to go ahead and open up the paintbrush menu here and go to dry media brushes and I'm going to choose this one called Kyle Ultimate Pencil Hard. And you can see it's really tiny right now, it's size eight. I'm gonna use the brackets on the keyboard. This is next to um, P on the keyboard. There's a right and a left bracket. I'm using the right bracket to make this a lot larger. Okay, so now that I have my brush selected, I'm gonna go to my layers panel go down here to the bottom and click on this icon that looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle of it. This is a layer mask. So when I click layer mask, you'll notice that I get this little white uh, rectangle added to the side of my layer. So I have to double check that I have black as my color over here on the top swatch. Now I can use this to just rough up this edge here. And I'm gonna go over this several times and I'm actually gonna change the size of the brush just to make a little bit more variation. So sometimes I'm gonna make it large and sometimes I'm gonna make it smaller just so that it looks more uh, realistic. So I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good right there. So you'll notice over here in the layers mask, everywhere where I just used the paintbrush, now there is black, uh, black color over here, and that is what is creating the mask. So now I need to add some color to this to make it um, a green color. So I'm going to choose this green right here and make a new layer with the plus sign down here. Oops, I didn't get my green. There's my green, but this is not quite the right green. So I'm gonna double click it and then move this around until I get a green that I think looks good. So we'll, uh, I'll try that, we'll see. Now I'm gonna use the paint bucket and paint this green but it's covered my whole project and that was expected. So what I'm going to do is go to layer, create clipping mask. And what that does is it clips this green layer to the layer that is underneath it, which is just what I wanted. Now I'm going to go to my blend modes and scroll through these. Wow, some of them are pretty crazy. I kind of like multiply. So I'm gonna leave that there. And it might be just a little bit dark, so I think I'm gonna change the opacity just a tiny bit. And that looks, that looks pretty good to me. So the next part of this project is creating the trees. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to use something called the polygonal lasso tool which is grouped together here with all of the other lasso tools. So I'm going to click and hold and make sure that I have the middle selection, which is the polygonal lasso. The way this works is I'm gonna click down here at the bottom of my project, click one time, and then you'll notice that it, it, it sticks. So now I'll go up and click again, and again, and again, and I'm not making it perfectly straight because trees are natural and they don't necessarily grow perfectly straight. And birch trees are kind of tall and skinny and at the bottom they're just a little bit wider. So I'm gonna click at the bottom and then I have to touch the beginning point and the end point. And when I do that, I get a complete selection. Now I'm going to get kind of a, I'm just gonna choose white. So a white color in my palette over here. And then I'm gonna get the paint bucket and paint this. There we go. And you'll notice that that is on its own separate layer and I could actually double click this and name it trees. Whoops, I misspelled that. 
trees. All right. So then I will just continue to just click, 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 and make my birch forest. And I'm going to have maybe three or four trees on one side, three or four trees on the other side, and leave some room in the middle for some other um, parts of the project. So the way that the lasso tool works is if you make a mistake, say you, you did that on accident, you can just push the backspace button and that will, um, that will go back in history for you and get rid of that. So don't forget to touch the beginning point to the end point to create a complete selection. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is draw some branches. So again with the polygonal lasso tool, I'm just going to just click and don't click too fast. You have to um, because that will be a double click and that will stop your selection. Okay, so paint bucket tool and yep, fill that in and then I'll just keep adding some more branches to this and keep keep going. So now what I'm going to do at this point is just go ahead and pause for a minute and, and finish up the trees. Okay, so here's the finished trees. Now I'm going to add the texture. So I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded, and for this one I use the paper called Flect, and you can choose whichever paper appeals to you. So Place Embedded, and I'm going to hold down Shift on the keyboard and drag this to fill up the canvas. There we go, and click the check mark. Then I'm gonna go over here and rasterize this smart object. So right click and rasterize layer. Then for this one, um, I'm also going to create a clipping mask. So I'll go to layer, create clipping mask, and now it's inside the trees and I'm just going to reduce the opacity this time. I'm not going to change the blend mode because I think the paper texture looks pretty cool just like it is. And that looks good to me. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now the last thing that I need to do is add the black lines on the trees. So again, new layer by clicking the plus mark down here at the bottom. I'm going to get black paint so I'm going to click this Restore Defaults button here so I have black. I'm going to get the paintbrush and I'm actually going to use the same brush, this Kyle Ultimate Pencil Hard, but the size is way too big. I'm going to make it about size 6. We'll, we'll try that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just scatter some of these lines on here and I want to make them look natural. So I'll have some variation, just create some patterns and some gaps. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just do what looks good to you. And I'm going to pause again and show you when I'm finished. And there we go. That is this project finished. I recommend that you save this as both a Photoshop document and a JPEG. Save it as a Photoshop document in case you want to go back and edit it again and save it as a JPEG so that you can put it into other programs. That's it for this video. Can't wait to see what you guys do.